This is my second case under review for spouse visa application, especially from Punjab, where the visa officer is looking at genuineness of relationship to decide whether visa should be given or not. In this case, we will look at not only was the visa rejected, but they also uh, were charged for misrepresentation of facts, uh, saying that the marriage is not genuine. And had we issued a visa, then it would have caused misrepresentation. And this is what uh, we will look at uh, today. So starting from the uh, top screen, this is uh, uh, posted on January 23rd. This is quite a recent case and we will scroll down and take a look at other information. So the case is between Bhupinder Singh Man and Minister of Citizenship and Immigration, of course. Uh, we will take a look what's going on here. Uh, judgment and reason. I have done some research in advance and I have highlighted some uh, important facts that I want you to know. So uh, on the screen, this case concerns the decision of a visa officer in New Delhi to refuse the applicant's application for work permit as the accompanying spouse of an Indian national who is in Canada on a study permit. Clearly spouse open work permit. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, by letter dated February 5, 5th, 2019, the officer refused the work permit application on the basis that the applicant had failed to provide sufficient evidence to support his claim that the marital relationship to his spouse is genuine. Of course, obviously. Um, I, I don't want to read each and every line, but just, just going to highlight what I think is important so that you can understand the summary quickly. Number three, the applicant submits that the officer's decision is unreasonable and the officer made findings of the fact in perverse and or capricious manner. That is what the counsel is saying. Uh, let's take a look at the facts. Mr. Bhupinder Singh Man is a 25-year-old national of India. The applicant is recently married to Ms. Pawan Preet Kaur, a 23-year-old national of India, who is currently in Canada on a study permit. Good. The applicant and Ms. Kaur are both residents of Punjab. Through family connections, they were set up to be in an arranged marriage. The families met on January 31st, 2018 which was around the same time that Ms. Kaur submitted an application for study permit in Canada. So this is one of the things that we see uh, many times, especially from people in Punjab, that their marriages are done close to the issuance of study visa itself. And that creates a, a question mark in the visa officer that how come they are marrying so close to when the girl got the visa. That means their intention is to go to Canada. Anyway. Uh, Mrs. Kaur had drafted an application on January 29, 2018, okay, and submitted to an uh, immigration counselor who filed it on January 31st, uh, 2018. The arranged marriage proceeded quickly after the families met as the applicant was the oldest of two sons and his family was keen on an early marriage. On February 1st, 2018, a small engagement ceremony was held. The marriage took place on February 4, 2018, of course. Uh, three days after the engagement, with religious ceremonies and large gathering of friends and families after the wedding, the couple visited many relatives. Ms. Kaur states in after she was going, she was with the applicant's family for over two months prior to her departure to Canada. Ms. Kaur received a visa on March 15th. She left for Canada on April 13th, so close to about uh, four weeks, less than four weeks. After uh, after about a month, uh, she left. Ms. Kaur alleges upon landing, she informed the immigration officer at the airport about the chain match. Said, oh, okay. Uh, we'll see what happens. On about uh, June 29, 2018, the applicant submitted his work permit application as an accompanying spouse in New Delhi. The applicant was invited for interview. And on um, November uh, 15, that's a long time. So they applied in June and the app. Uh, the interview was in November 15th, uh, June, July, August, September, October, November, after five months. Interview was conducted in New Delhi. And the pre-interview entries on the GCMS indicate that Ms. Kaur had been single when she applied for study permit and married shortly before the visa was issued. So the marriage was done before the visa was issued, but she applied as a single. Uh, Ms. Kaur arrived in Canada soon after wedding, but did not inform the visa officer immigration. So here's the problem. So the GCMS notes say that she did not inform, but earlier Ms. Kaur said uh, in, her, in, a, in the previous uh, paragraph that she did inform somebody at the airport. Uh, we will see what happens later on. Sounds interesting to me. During the interview, the officer noted several concerns regarding the bona fides of the marriage. 
such as the incompatibility of the education so husband wife there's a possible mismatch of education so this is a red flag to them the hastily fi finalized marriage you know marriage done in haste the inability of the applicant to explain how the wedding could have been arranged in three to four days the applicant's lack of knowledge on the fact that Ms. Kaur had been planning to go to Canada and the fact that the photographs did not show the stated attendance of 250 300 guests at the time of wedding applicants lack of holiday with Ms. Kaur and the applicants inability to provide an explanation when questioned the applicants lack of knowledge of Ms. Kaur and the limited evidence of contact between the applicant and Ms. Kaur so as you see you know there are a lot of factors they have raised and typically these are and more are the factors that they use to interview and then find out uh, whether this is a genuine uh, relationship or not. If you cannot answer these basic questions, then very likely they will say, sorry, the marriage is not, not genuine. All right, so that's, that's what the reality is. Take a look at number 11. By letter dated February 5th, 2019, the officer reviews the work permit application. Based on the application supporting document, application notes, the interview found that the applicant provided insufficient information on explanation regarding the progression of relationship with uh, Ms. Kaur, the wedding time spent together marriage, the current living arrangements to support the decision the marriage general. Officer for also found that the applicant provided insufficient evidence or explanation to the ongoing communication between the couple before and after marriage. So these are all the factors which of course are very uh, deeply scrutinized in spouse visa applications, uh, you know, you know, on, on all kind of uh, uh, spouse dependent applications and of course uh, number 12 balance of probability the found they failed to provide sufficient evidences and then to also found the applicant in admissibility to 41 a misrepresentation all right so there are a lot of issues here so I will jump to the analysis from the court side I don't want to waste time reading the issues here but I will jump to uh, the analysis which was made by the court so here's the what here's what the court is looking at this is a judicial review application the judicial review uh, seeks to only find out whether uh, there's any mistake in the procedure uh, done by the visa officer was made or not the judge will not decide yes or no whether the visa should be given but this is a review of the judicial process so what are the key issues uh, of this application for JR which is judicial review is number one did the officer error in finding the applicant to be inadmissible number one of course was the officer refuse of applicants work permit application reasonable so those are clear issues and the and the court will make their own assessment and then we will look at those assessment in the following pages so now we have come to the meat of the analysis and you see analysis starting from line 22 the applicant sought to apply for open work permit uh, However, as the officer determined that the applicant was not in the genuine marriage, uh, here it is, uh, he was found to be inadmissible under section 40. The officer found the applicant's misrep could have been used. Okay, that's fine. Let's go, go to number one. The applicant says, they're saying to the court that the officer made an unreasonable decision based on erroneous findings of fact made in perverse or capricious manner. The applicant submits says he answered every question. He did not provide wrong information. He alleges there were some moments of nervousness, which is why he did not answer. The applicant submits that the officer er erred in finding the applicant misquotes were incompatible in terms of education uh, since the applicant had obtained a diploma to become more employable. Okay. Uh, the applicant submits that it's unreasonable for the officer to found it problematic. The photographs did not show all the guests in one. That's that's an objection that uh, that the husband made. Uh, let's look at this one. Uh, moreover, the applicant points out that he and his wife did not have the luxury of holiday after incurring large expense for for bedding. As for the officer's finding of incorrect course completion, the applicant submits that he understood the phrase completion of the course. So I'm going to start from uh, line 25. Uh, this is what the judge is writing in his uh, assessment. I agree with the respondent. Uh, the GCMS interview notes indicate that the applicant could not provide answers to explanations, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's something, I mean, uh, what I've done is highlighted from here, this line. Uh, the onus was nevertheless on the applicant to provide sufficient information to address the concerns. So the burden is always on the applicant to provide sufficient answer. If you cannot provide sufficient answer, you cannot say that uh, the officer did a wrong decision. You have to provide 
to uh, so answer whatever questions are being asked. However, a review of the record reveals that the applicant simply failed to provide sufficient explanations or evidence to elevate the officer's concern. Let me take this, stop this call first. Certainly, the applicant could have better explained some of the questions during the interview as he's attempting to do through the affidavit on his application, but the rec record shows that he did not. Based on applicant's lack of explanation or knowledge on aspects, including his spouse's intention to go abroad, details on why the marriage was prepared hastily, how it was prepared so quickly, or why they did not go on holiday, the officer reasonably concluded that the marriage was genuine. Here's the thing. Uh, let me just, uh, you know, highlight this. Here, based on applicant's lack of explanation or knowledge on aspects, that is why the visa is refused and the judge agrees with the visa officer that it was reasonable for the visa office to deny his application because he could not answer the basic questions that were posed to him. Um, so the officer reasonably concluded that the marriage was not genuine and the applicant was thus inadmissible for misrepresentation. Given the officer did not err in finding the applicant to be inadmissible for misrepresentation, it was reasonable for the officer to refuse the work permit application. Of course, the work permit application was also denied. Certified question, there is no certified question. And the conclusion, line 28, the officer reasonably found the applicant to be inadmissible for misrep. Uh, and that's it. The application for judicial review is dismissed. Goodbye. Uh, banned for five years. So that's it. Uh, let me see uh, the name of the judge listed here. Let's take a look at other things. These are the the records from the case. Uh, docket number, Bhupinder Singh Man. Uh, this was in Toronto. Date of hearing was January 9th. Uh, judgment, Mr. Ahmed J and appearance in Maninder Sidhu, Barrister Solicitor and for Attorney General, uh, you know, uh, for, for David Joseph for Attorney General. So um, here's it. So what did I learn from this case? What do you learn from this case here? Let me just go back to the case, uh, to the last page, and this is what you learned from the case. Uh, this is line is line starting from 25 and here it is look at my cursor based on the applicants here based on the applicants lack of explanation or logic or, or knowledge on, on aspects including his spouse intention the questions were asked to him he could not answer these questions if you cannot answer these questions that means you have no knowledge about your wife that means your marriage is determined to be not meeting the requirements of regulation four, that means you do not uh, meet the requirements of the spouse visa. And not only that, because it possibly could have caused uh, uh, erroneous uh, visa issuance, thereby I am going to ban you for five years for misrep. This is what, this is what it is. So I hope you uh, learned something from this case if you want to read this case on your own, all you have to do is look at the information on the screen, copy all the information and put this on Google and possibly you can find out the website of the federal court and then read this case on your own and then take some benefit of this. So we should try to learn from other people's mistake, uh, find out why spouse visa gets denied so that if you are applying for your own spouse visa, at least you will not be uh, likely to repeat those mistakes and you will get the visa uh, in your own case. Thank you very much. As always, I always uh, read your comments and looking to discuss more cases. If your case is uh, denied, then I'm looking to analyze those cases as well. Thank you.